Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the interview of Dr. Bilal Felix, a seven star Islamic scholar. This is Salam TV. My name is Ashura Mzali. So many people know you as Dr. Bilal Felix, but I believe someone out there might be wondering who Dr. Bilal Felix is. Who are you, Mr. Well, I'm a Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica. Born in a Christian family. Raised in Canada. My parents migrated to Canada when I was quite small. And raised as a Christian. From there, I moved with my family to Malaysia when I graduated from high school. And lived there again as a Christian. Though I lived amongst Muslims there, I didn't really know what Islam was. I returned to Canada to do my university degree in biochemistry. And um, while I was in university, I got caught up in the student movement, a movement which was seeking to make a better world for human beings. The role that Canada was playing in the Vietnam War at the time, Canada was making the bombs which the Americans were dropping on the Vietnamese. The napalm, which uh, is liquid which comes over you and burns you whilst you're standing there, you know. Um, horrible, very horrible. And uh, can Canada was producing these bombs. So the students uh, took over the campus and protested against Canada's involvement, etc., etc. So I got caught up in that uh, movement, uh, political movement of sorts. And in the course of being involved in that type of um, activity, I also got or imbibed some of the ideas of those behind the movement for change they were proposing communism. What could we do better? How could we do this better? And communism was the, the proposal. So I became a communist whilst I was in, uh, in, in Canada, in university, in Simon Fraser University. And from there I did a stint with the Communist Party in the US and uh, eventually traveled back to Canada and continued to work with various communist related uh, groups while being disheartened thinking that communism really wasn't the answer because it couldn't compete with capitalism and um, at the same time it was very vicious I could see you know Mao Zedong cultural revolution millions were killed in Stalin's time in Russia again millions of Russians were killed you know, because they said they were the bourgeoisie who couldn't be reformed. You know, their mindset was so capitalistic that the only way to change society was to just kill them all, wipe them out. And somehow that didn't sit right with me. I mean, it was going on, it was going on in the name of, you know, of society, uh, betterment of society, etc. But it seemed to me to be evil. So it, it left me in a vacuum wanting to find another system which would provide all that communism was claiming to provide but free from the evils of communism and of course I became a communist which meant I had to disbelieve in God's existence you know from being a Christian because you could say I was a nominal Christian I was a Christian in name yeah I did go to the church but, and okay. hmm. but but I wasn't really you know, a hardcore practicing Christian who stood by all its principles and that. So, you know, Christianity was like, uh, as with most Christians, it's just something that's part of your culture. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. because your mother is... It, was, it, didn't ha it, it didn't have principles which would provide or could compete with communism. It didn't have an economic system, you know, it didn't have a political system, it didn't have all of this. This was missing. So it wasn't an option. So I easily went into communism. Whereas at that stage when communism failed for me, 
uh, I started to look, I saw Islam and I started to read about Islam. That's the point, how did you get to, to like Islam? How did it inspire you to become a Muslim? Well, you know, the thing is that it was at a particular time, that that time when I had become disillusioned about communism. So I was open. And uh, there were some brothers from America who were in Toronto at the time I'd gone back to Toronto. And they were trying to, they had become Muslims in America, and they were trying to spread the ideas amongst us as youth. Um, uh, for the most part, in the organization that I was in, we rejected because we already had accepted the idea that, that religion was the opium of the masses. It was just a means of drugging people into not knowing what their rights are and what they should do. Uh, make them yes, so that they, so they could be controlled easily and ruled. Okay. So uh, at this point in time, what happens is that they actually, one of them, Abdullah Hakim Quick, he succeeded in reaching one uh, female who was in the uh, central committee of our organization, and she accepted Islam. So when, he re when, he, when she accepted Islam, that caused me to question uh, what's Why? going on. Why? <laughs> Why would you do what, that? What's the secret behind? Yeah. Hmm. You know, so I then asked her, how? How can you do that? We know that, you know, religion is just uh, a means of controlling people, you know. It doesn't... It doesn't make any sense. Well, they say. it doesn't make life better in the sense of societal life. Maybe individually it might, you know, you work for an individual. Up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you accept oppression. You turn the other cheek. So when the, you know, so how do you change and correct evil when you're turning the other cheek? So she said, no, 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 this is not uh, religion like we knew, you know, Christianity, that's Christianity. Islam is different. Islam doesn't say turn the other cheek. <laughs> Islam says if you attack me, I'm going to fight you. Okay. <laughs> you understand? So Islam was not about... And then, and then also, I, at that time, I was also reading about liberation movements in Africa. And then I came across, the, you know, the Algerian Revolution. And the battle cry for the Algerian Revolution was Allahu Akbar. Okay. You see, so that said, yeah, uh, oh, <laughs> this means that there is something there, you know. I mean, these, these are people, the religion is driving them to fight against the oppression of the French. Okay. So, so that, you know, opened up some avenues for me to reflect. I said, okay, give me some books, let me start to read. And mm -hmm. I started to read, you know, books about Islam and Islamic theory and concepts and politics and economics and all these kind of things and Alhamdulillah after reading it became clear to me that yes what I was looking for is it's there mm. you know what I wanted to avoid was not there you know and there was some good in Christianity it was there in Islam mm. the, the the weaknesses not having political systems and things it is there in Islam the, the, the political system all the missing things from Christianity were there in Islam you could say theoretically but I still had to deal with belief in God because as a communist I had denied God's existence okay. for so many years right so how do you turn that from you that did, you didn't have to do anything that to do with God you didn't pray no 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 as a communist of course you, you, you deny God's existence so how are you gonna pray pray to what you just go partying yeah <laughs> you know, that's your, that's your prayer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what?